Let's talk some thematic uh, investing with uh, Christian Magoon, CEO of Amplify ETFs. Christian, welcome back to the show. Great to have you. Hey, good morning, Oliver. Good to see you. All right. So uh, how much has the Bitcoin ETF excitement um, sucked up flows from other thematic tech funds? Are you seeing uh, the competition getting more fierce? Yeah, there's definitely been a, a demand to get into Bitcoin via these spot ETFs. Uh, you know, we've been in kind of the space of uh, Bitcoin investing as well as uh, cryptocurrency stocks and blockchain stocks since 2018 with our block. So it's been a tailwind for the block ETF, which is kind of a hybrid way to play the blockchain and crypto space. It's had double digit gains this year, but certainly there's a move uh, in, with advisors and institutions to start getting into Bitcoin. And I don't know if it's really taken away the flows from thematics, but it's definitely been more of a focus than it's been uh, over the last three to four years, um, simply because I think of price movement and then just access to this uh, unique asset class and a 40 act product, which I think uh, many institutions and advisors needed to see before they invested in it. They weren't going to open a, an account on Coinbase, for example. All right. Um, Bitcoin versus the miners, both big moves in the last six months. But for the tokens, uh, a lot of these are all time highs again. The miners, the block ETF stuck kind of in the middle of the range compared to what it was three years ago. So big move up off the lows. I mean, it's more than doubled. Uh, but where is that gap? Uh, how come some of the miners are struggling here? How much do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I think from the, a miner's perspective, I mean, we have the halving coming up, which will reduce the amount of uh, Bitcoin that will be able to be mined by one half. So that's going to create a more competitive environment uh, for miners going into the halving here, probably around April 21st and probably going to create some consolidation. So the smaller miners, I think, are going to be under pressure. Um, now, the, now, the good news for the for surviving miners are the ones that are doing the acquiring. You know, the thought is, or at least based off previous halvings, that the value of Bitcoin will be higher. So although they'll mine less because less is available each day, it should be a higher overall value. Uh, we're also seeing some of these miners, mm -hmm. uh, you know, simply not sell their coins. Uh, and that's been beneficial to them of late because of the increase in prices. You know, even at, you know, 63,000 today, it's been quite a run uh, over the last several months. So uh, I think it's going to be an interesting time for miners. Again, we think the primary thesis here is investing in blockchain, of which miners are a portion of that uh, space. We also think, you know, cryptocurrency ETFs or Bitcoin ETFs work there. But then the other side is really tokenization of assets. And that's being done through blockchain uh, technology, uh, which uh, we think will continue to roll out and be really beneficial for companies that are looking to settle transactions quickly or manage processes where they don't want a middleman involved. So we think the rise of blockchain is you know, certainly mostly known by crypto uh, right now, but it will migrate more into the use cases on the business side. And that's why we think a blockchain thesis in general is kind of a better uh, mm. lower volatility, built lower volatile way to uh, address the space. Okay. Uh, I want to get through a, a couple of your other funds too. So just real quick though, Christian, to your point about the having for the miners in the past, the price has always rallied for the token. So it makes sense for them to keep mining, even though they're only getting half as much per each unit of power. But what if it doesn't? I mean, have you thought about what that would mean for an ETF that's filled with miners? Like if the price goes down during a halving, these guys are in a really tight spot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, if you look at uh, the crypto mining uh, ETFs, and there's a variety of them, uh, last year, most of them were down around 75 to 80 um, percent. So had a really tough year. Um, and uh, uh, the price of Bitcoin uh, and the scarcity of Bitcoin is a big risk there. So again, uh, miners um, kind of are a double edged sword. You know, if the price of Bitcoin is rising, uh, certainly a great leveraged way to play uh, the Bitcoin space, not unlike mm. silver mining stocks or gold mining stocks. However, during pullbacks, 
uh, or during you know periods of time where it maybe becomes harder to uh, mine uh, Bitcoin, and on top of it the price goes down, you could see some considerable downside. So we really think you know the solution there is to access it not in pure form, but in a diversified form with an active manager who can control the exposure to Bitcoin or crypto miners in an overall diversified portfolio. Okay. All right. Uh, let's talk a few others here. The hack ETF that tracks the cybersecurity names has made a big comeback, trying to get through all-time highs. What's powering that uh, right now, Christian, real quick? What are the biggest kind of movers there as you see it for the cyber world? Yeah, so I mean, geopolitical uh, factors are really pushing you know, cyber attacks to all-time highs. Unfortunately, AI is a double-edged sword for cybersecurity stocks. We're mm. seeing more attacks that are automated. On the other side, there's more development of tools to hopefully protect. So it's really an arms race in the cybersecurity space. And we really think that this is an area that's sort of like a utility now. You need to own it, but has upside in terms of growth, unfortunately, because of the rise of cyber intrusions and attacks. So we think uh, cybersecurity really needs to be a part of your core thematic uh, you know, uh, allocation. And we think that um, this is an area that unfortunately is gonna have a lot more upside here in the next uh, three to five years. Okay. Uh, Broadcom, a big holding in that fund. That has worked really well uh, for sure, having that hardware play in there. So, uh, so right now looking like a very wise uh, uh, choice to include that in the among some of the other uh, cloud and service providers. One of the big winners in your suite of funds for the year, though, is not so much tech, right? It's shipping. Uh, yeah. Tell me, give me the 60-second pitch for Be Dry. Um, because we've talked about that one before. Um, you've got a sub-advisor on that or did you guys take ownership of that whole fund? Yeah, so we have uh, ownership of the fund, but there is a sub-advisor that specializes right. in buying shipping futures, which yeah. is called Breakwave. Yes, right? that's right, we've and, talked to them. Yeah, and, and Breakwave, you know, simply they're buying shipping futures, dry bulk shipping futures. So uh, the quick, you know, uh, reason it's done so well, it's up over 200% over the last six months. Uh, it's our leading performer up over 35% year to date. It's what we're reading in the papers, seeing in the news. It's the Houthi attacks, the issues in the Red Sea, as well as some of the constraints in the Panama Canal. This is pushing shipping prices up for dry bulk goods and B Drive benefits from that because it owns the futures. So that's an interesting trade, I think, uh, to ride that unfortunately uh, set of problems that are uh, really headline news this year. All right. Wow, be dry. <laughs> what a move. Okay, forget the blockchain miners, just ships, man. Guess um, that's the way to go right now. All right, uh, incredible. Five bucks, <laughs> uh, you know, coming, uh, you know, into December last year uh, or November. So uh, a cool triple there in the last uh, five months. Thanks, Christian, very much. Appreciate the walkthrough. Good to catch up. Good to see you. Take care. Thanks, Christian McGoon, CEO of Amplify ETF.